Hello and welcome to episode 23 of my KSP campaign. My name is Mike Aben and last episode at the conclusion, we left Bob and his two tourists in space high above the moon on a flyby trajectory and we had to make a decision as to setting our course in order to get us back home to Kerbin because after our encounter with the moon, our orbit around Kerbin was going to have a very high periapsis. So we need to bring the periapsis down to the atmosphere. And uh, I left sort of with the question of, you know, sort of where should we do this burn? Well, the answer to that question is we should be doing this burn at periapsis, the periapsis with the moon. And the direction we should be performing this burn is prograde. And that feels a little bit counterintuitive that we're burning prograde relative to the moon in order to lower our periapsis relative to Kerbin. But the reason for that again has to do with the direction in which the moon is moving. Remember the moon is moving uh, in a counterclockwise direction, but we're moving in a clockwise direction. So prograde with the moon is retrograde relative to Kerbin. So that's why it ends up reducing the periapsis relative to Kerbin. As far as why periapsis, well that has to do with the Oberth effect, which basically says that if you are burning in a prograde or retrograde direction, you're going to get the most effect on your trajectory by burning at the place where you're going to be moving the fastest, and that's going to be at periapsis. And I'll go through the numbers in some future episode, but right now I actually want to go over some different numbers, which actually have me a little bit confused. If you see the delta V of my burn, it is 377 meters per second. And that confused me. The reason why it confused me is because I've done this kind of maneuver a number of times in the past. I always like doing these flybys during my careers. And usually the burn is way less than that. In fact, it's always been way less than that. And in fact, I'll have an, a link here. If you follow the link here, this goes to my beta campaign where I did pretty much the exact same thing. And this burn was under 100 meters per second. So I'm really very, very curious as to why all of a sudden now it is so more than three times the cost of this burn. So follow the link if you like. And if you have any kind of explanation, please share it down in the comments because uh, this added velocity that I uh, put on here does have an effect on what happens after my moon encounter. But that will be for later, because right now I'm more concerned with picking up some of this near-moon science. So I'm just waiting to get below the correct altitude. There we go. And the one that's critical to get really is the EVA report, because the EVA, EVA reports at this altitude are biome-specific. All the rest of them, the crew reports and the material study and the goo and the, the temperature scan, are all just you know, near space, space near the moon ones. But the other one, the EVA reports are biome specific. So you want to get as many of these as you can. And certainly the science alert mod really helps here. And, and I felt I did pretty good. I ended up getting EVAs over five different biomes during this brief time I was near the moon. I got the Highland Craters, the East Far Side Crater, the Highlands, the Midlands, and the Midland Craters. I was particularly pleased with getting both the Highland Craters and the Midland Craters because both of those uh, can be challenging ones to get. And of course in all that we also have to perform our burn at periapsis, which we are just finishing off here, putting our Kerbin periapsis well into Kerbin's atmosphere. You might have noticed I was actually a little bit late on the draw uh, starting that particular burn because I was paying so much time attention to collecting science. And during all of this, of course, Bob, he had enough to do <laughs> doing the EVA reports and to perform that particular burn that I left the collecting of the science until we we're back into uh, high space around the moon. So then we send Bob out to collect uh, all of this science, once again, put it all in the command capsules because um, the whole service module here will burn up in the atmosphere. I'm not taking that down with me. We need to make sure all the science is safely stowed away. But in all of that, Bob still manages to take a moment to take in this beautiful view of Kerman. Oh yeah, that's very nice. And then of course comes the time to bid adieu to the moon, leave its sphere of influence, and start thinking about uh, tweaking our arrow braking maneuver 
to put us into an orbit around Kerbin. And of course, we're going to be using the Trajectories mod to help us with our aero braking maneuver, but right off the bat, I want to point out some things that were making me nervous that didn't feel right. Number one, the trajectory that was predicted by KSP is an escape trajectory, as you can see here. According to KSP, if I ignore what's going on with the atmosphere, um, it's saying that I'm going to come around Kerbin and then be ejected out of the Kerbin system. Well, that means I'm trucking it. I'm, I'm doing more than just simply falling down from the moon. And this has to do with that 377 meter per second burn that I did at periapsis moon to get my periapsis of the Kerbin down to where it needed to be. And I added a lot of velocity. I have escape velocity here. Now, to get from low Kerbin orbit out of the Kerbin system takes a little under a thousand meters per second. Remember, orbital velocity, a low Kerbin orbital velocity is around 2.2, 2.3 kilometers per second. So I'm adding, I'm, when I get down to the atmosphere, I'm going to be adding about another kilometer per second onto that. I'm going to be doing well over 3 kilometers per second. And here my periapsis is under 30 kilometers to do what trajectories is predicting what I should do. 30, under 30 kilometers at 3 kilometers per second? Oh, that doesn't feel good to me. I'm sorry, it really doesn't. I don't have any heat shields or anything on this thing. I mean, I'm just putting the vessel in the way it is. Uh, yeah, that uh, that feels... Even though Trajectories is saying that my, um, my Gs I'll be pulling is only about 0.64, and my resulting orbit actually is still is pretty high. As you can see, my orbit's still coming out higher than my communication satellites, which have an altitude of about 1,000 kilometers. So... It still doesn't feel right. So what I did is I wanted to check on how the Otter 2, you might recall Otter 2 is built and ready for a mission. So I thought, you know, let me think about this. Let, I'm going to go out to the Otter 2, go out to KSP or KSC, go to the Otter 2. Now it turned out it's night by the time I got to the KSC and so I wasn't going to fly that Otter 2 mission because I don't want to fly missions in the dark because that doesn't make very good video. But what I thought I would do is I would save my game here. My instincts tell me I'm coming in too fast, but I thought, you know what, let's, I'm not used this aerodynamic, I've never done aero braking with this aerodynamic model, with this shock heating model, the stock one, so why not go with what it's telling me, see how it goes, if things go badly, well then I can go back to what my instincts are telling me to do. All right, so we're just about ready to take the plunge here. I've adjusted my staging so that the space bar will eject the capsules. Uh, that's kind of like maybe an emergency ejection procedure, but we're just about hitting the atmosphere here. You can see our velocity is almost 3.3 kilometers per second. We adjust ourselves to go in retrograde because the engine is the toughest part, and we want to protect the parachutes that are up there towards the top. And, uh, yeah, oh, you can see a waypoint there. That's my new waypoint manager mod. It's not my mod. I just installed that mod, waypoint manager. Uh, yeah, there it is. You can, it, it, uh, we'll be seeing this a little bit later in this very, very video. But for now, we'll just kind of put this away because we are, we are in there. And what I want to do is watch that time to periapsis. Still over a minute to go. If, if I get past periapsis, I'm over the worst of it. But we are falling fast still. A lot of heating, trying to hold that retrograde vector, but it is sort of fighting me. It does want to flip around the other way. Turn on the temperature gauges so that I can uh, see what's going on. I'm also watching those G's. Don't want them to get. Don't want to be decelerating too quickly. So far, still 45 seconds from periapsis just lost our we've now orbital that's why we had that camera switch instead of an escape trajectory 3.3 kilometers per second going through the atmosphere that's not feeling good you can see our temperature gauge on our engines just turned on but that's not too big a deal oh man my G's are now getting close to a full G more than what uh, trajectories was predicting and it's really fighting me it wants to flip around I'm losing it oh no oh oh jeez oh. Oh, oh. okay okay what's left 
What do I got here? Well, I got Bob. That's Bob in the spud. No parachute. Okay, well, uh, Bob's done. <laughs> oh, dear. Okay, so this this is no good. What else we got left? That's that, that. Okay, this parachute. Oh, there's those those guys. Um, And they have no parachutes either. Nobody has parachutes. All the parachutes. Parachutes didn't... You know what? I think the pro body exploded and the parachutes aren't exploded, but they're not attached to anything. So that's of no good. So why don't we take a look at our uh, our resulting orbit here? See if trajectories did. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, we are now suborbital. We are seriously suborbital. Well, that certainly wasn't what Trajectories was predicting. So yeah, all these guys are done. Okay, so let's go back to that safe and try something a little bit different. So we'll just turn ourselves prograde here and uh, start raising our periapsis. And what I'm going to look at are the G-forces on uh, the Trajectories mod. And I'll burn until I get it in around... 0.25, about a quarter of a G. And and that ends up raising my uh, periapsis up to about 35 kilometers. That feels a lot more comfortable. The G-forces, although it's not a, it's really the velocity that's the big issue, but the G-forces does give you an indication of how quickly you are going to be decelerating, which gives you a, an indication of what the air resistance is going to be like, because that is what is decelerating you. So if you keep your G-forces low, um, should come out okay. And you can see here that Trajectories is predicting a very high orbit. That white orbit's what's Trajectories pre predicting, which is a good, what, three quarters of the way out to the moon? But the thing is, is I do have about nine days worth of life support on these things, so it really isn't that big of an issue. I, I can take my time uh, getting these guys back home. So once again, we turn ourselves retrograde and get and put ourselves down into the atmosphere. And what I'm looking at here really is that time to periapsis, just passing 15 seconds to periapsis. Once I'm past periapsis, I'm on my way back up, and things are going to get better <laughs> instead of worse. So there we go. Three seconds, two, one, past periapsis, on our way back up. A couple of things to take note of. One is, I don't know, I'm looking at that G-meter. I wish I turned on the Kerbal Engineer uh, G-force indicator, but it is, in my mind, clearly over half a G when Trajectories was predicting only around a quarter of a G. And also, take a look at my apoapsis height. It is now down to, what, 2.7, 2.6 kilometers? Um, it was going, the prediction was that it would be about three quarters of the way to the moon which is a 12,000 kilometer. So clearly Trajectories is kind of out to lunch. And actually it was right around here that I realized, I started asking myself, when was the last time I updated Trajectories? And in fact, I hadn't updated it since I started this career back around, I don't know, 1.01, 1.02. .01, and with 1.04, there were aerodynamic changes. So, Trajectories is working with the old stock aerodynamics, not the newer stock aerodynamics that went in with 1.04, so no wonder it's off. Oh, so uh, I made sure after this to update my Trajectories mod, so hopefully the next time I'm going to be using it, it will have a little bit more accurate of a prediction. And then once sort of the scary heating was over, I thought I'd adjust my attitude, try and create a bit of a a downforce, even more drag, trying to reduce my periapsis as much as I can. I mean, the atmosphere is pretty thin, so I'm not really sure if I'm accomplishing anything. But my uh, eventual ap apoapsis ended up being in and, in and around 1,800 kilometers. Uh, my t and would only take about an hour and a half to come around and get back into the atmosphere. Trajectories was predicting uh, only about 0.21 Gs, which was less than what it was predicting for the initial pass, so I thought I'd just stick with this, ride it around, go through one more time. And the second pass through the atmosphere went without incident, except once again my old version of trajectories uh, predicted 
an apoapsis that was too high and in fact this time I was starting to worry I wasn't going to be coming out of the atmosphere at all and I oriented my craft to see if I could generate some some lift some some body lift and I honestly don't even know um, does the stock aerodynamics model this I know uh, the old uh, Ferrum mods uh, and uh, the Near mods, they, they modified body lift. Does, does, I don't even know if the stock aerodynamic dynamics mod does, but I, I did this anyway, and I ended up coming up with a, a, an apoapsis of only about 100 kilometers, which quite frankly is perfect. Uh, I, I wish I could say I planned it that way, but I didn't plan it that way. And then I took a look at my final uh, trajectory, my final prediction of my landing spot, and used the remainder of my fuel to try and push my predicted landing location out into the ocean and more southwards to try and see if I can get as close to the Kerbal Space Center as I possibly could. And with the last of my fuel reserves finally spent, there was nothing left to do anymore except for to ride this thing down. So the service module wasn't serving any purpose, so that was uh, ditched. And the descent went without incident. I've descended uh, this particular configuration of command modules or command capsules before, so I knew I knew that part of it wasn't going to be that much of an issue. And in fact, I did end up coming pretty close to the Kerbal Space Center. You can just sort of see it over there, uh, you know, off past the clouds. Land and didn't quite make the ocean again. Trajectories predicted uh, too long, but. I will update trajectories, so hopefully these predictions will start to become um, a little bit more dependable. Not surprisingly, this was my best science haul yet. 388.8 science from this mission gave me 486 science, which was enough for me to unlock the remaining five nodes in the tier five of the tech tree. So those things are all going to have to take some time to be researched. But once that research is done, you know, it's going to be like Christmas with all of these new parts. And after picking up a few more contracts, I was had enough money as well to start the process of upgrading the research and development center. So once that is upgraded, that will bring the tier six tech nodes online, which obviously will bring this game into sort of its middle phases, I suppose. Anyway, all of that is going to have to be for future episodes. I thank you for watching, and I hope to see you next time.